Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss lead code question 863 that says all nodes distance k in binary tree. So guys this question is somewhere easy to medium level of question where you have to make one key observation in order to solve this. So if you have made that one observation right then you would be easily able to come up with an approach as well as you can come up with a code. So yeah guys watch this video and learn with me how you can make this observation. Now here you would be given one binary tree. Uh, and uh, to identify the binary tree, you would be given one root element as well as one target element. Now, from this target element, you need to return an array of nodes that are at a distance of k from this target, right? So you need to return all the nodes that are at a distance k from the given target node. Okay, you can return the answer in any order. So if you take a look at the first example, here, this, uh, this is the root node. The node 3 is a root node. As you can see, this is the root and target is 5 and this is our target node. Now we need to find all the nodes that are at a distance 2 from the target node. So which are those nodes? So 1 is this is at a distance 1, this is at a distance 2. So this is one node, then 1, 2, this is other node and this is also other node. So this node, this 7, 4 and 1, they all 3 nodes are at a distance 2 from this node 5 and that's why we have written 7, 4 and 1 in our answer. Okay. Question is easy to understand here. We simply need to return one array or a vector of tree nodes that are at a distance k from the given target node. And in order to identify the complete tree, we are given the root of this tree. Right? Now, so if you think that uh, uh, in what different possible direction we can get the answer. So here, if you see that for this given binary tree and this is the target node, uh, this is the target the node. Now here, our answer can be possible in uh, in the left direction, in the right direction, as well as in the upward direction. There are three directions, right? You see, binary tree has uh, two choices. There is the left choice, right choice. Now, in this case, we can have our answer in the parent direction also. So, this is the third new direction that is added. That is the towards the parent also we need to check. As you can see, this is also valid answer. So here we are checking in three directions. That is the left child, right child and parent. So we have to keep track of this three direction and we need to search the answer in this three direction, right? To get all the answer, we need to search in the left child, right child as well as towards the parent. So uh, the left, right and towards the top, that is towards the parent. So we need to check for answer in three possible direction, right? So for uh, this given example, we, if we check in for the left child, we would check for the right child as well as we would check for the top. The three direction right so what you can do is in order to check for all these three directions we can make a bi-directional graph right we can create a graph with a bi-directional edges and if you have bi-directional edges graph then what you can do is you can start a bfs run from the target node and you can make a bfs call up till the distance travel equals to k right up till the distance travel equals to k you can uh, make a BFS call and yeah at this point just stop and return all the elements that are present in the queue okay simple it is uh, you if you might be a bit a little bit confused let's try to understand this so for this given uh, tree for this given tree uh, that, that is a given root uh, what we would do is we would create a graph how we would do that see we would add a bi-directional edge uh, for let's say this is a root and this is the left child so we would add one edge from root to uh, left child as well as from left child to root so we would add bidirectional edge at for each node, right? We would add this type of bidirectional edges, okay? So how we are doing this? For that, uh, see, this is our base condition. If k is equal to zero, then the only node that is present at the zero distance would be the node itself, that is the target node. So we return the target node's value. Now, uh, we are creating an odd order map for type int and vector of int. Uh, so this is similar to adjacency matrix you can think of. So uh, here we are creating the graph. So we are making a graph by using a DFS call. So this build function, we would pass the root as well as this graph data structure. So what we are doing here is, if there is a child on the roots left, then we push the uh, the edge from root to uh, left child as well as from the left child to root. So we push the bidirectional edge from root to left child as well as from left child to root, right? And similarly, we do the same thing for the right child, right? So yeah, this is how we would add the bidirectional edges for all the nodes, right? For all the edges and nodes, we would add bidirectional edges. So things are clear till here. That's, we made a graph that has bidirectional edges. And then we are making a BFS call. We, uh, the BFS call would start from the target node, okay? 
so see here we have created the graph basis on the values because the values are unique right in a tree values are unique so yeah we directly created a graph on the basis of values and thus we are simply uh, passing the value in the queue now uh, for uh, we would do a bfs call that means uh, keep uh, means uh, remove the topmost element traverse all the edges and element and do this until the distance travel equals to k until this point right so let's say here we are here this is our target one we are starting a bfs call from here okay so yeah we are traveling a distance one which uh, and we add this node we added this node we added this node three edges and nodes we added okay all are at distance one then we would check if the distance travels equal to k no k is two here no then we have to again make a, a bfs call so yeah we would uh, travel a distance two and push this node to the queue push this node to the queue here there is nothing so uh, we don't do anything and at a distance two we would push this node to the queue now after we have traversed the distance equals to k that means distance travels equals to k then all the nodes that are present in the queue that is node seven four and one would be our answer right would be our answer and that's why we simply uh, empty the queue and push all the nodes that are present in the queue at this point to our answer right that is our answer okay so this is our answer and we are simply we simply pop the elements uh, from the queue and push to the answer right and at the end we return the answer so this at this point we simply break this while loop as we don't want to iterate right see there are uh, still possible chances to iterate for this is a node zero node but we don't want we only need the nodes that are at a distance k from the target node and that we have found so at this point we simply break okay so yeah the time complexity for this solution is big o of n uh, if you want to go in a precise way then you can think of big o of n plus k see this n is to make a graph this is to make a graph and this is for bfs call we are making bfs call only k times so yeah that is that's why big o of n plus big o of k and the space complexity also you can generally take it as big o of n yeah okay so this is one approach to solve this question i hope this uh, it is not that in, uh, that hard to build the intuition to solve to solve this question right so there is one another way to solve the same thing but the only thing is we won't make a uh, graph the complete graph data structure so in that case what we can do is see guys we know who is our left child the target knows or target node also know who is his right child but but the target node doesn't know who is its parent so in so in order to uh, track or to keep uh, track of the parent node also what we would do is we would make one bf uh, one dfs call to store the parent of all the nodes right we would store the parent of all the nodes so that we can traverse from this target node to above that is towards its parent we can also traverse in this direction right we simply need to traverse in the three direction left right and top so in order to traverse to the top direction we would store who is the parent of the node right when we will store that for all the nodes so yeah we can make the traversal easy let's see how we would do that so uh, we have made a function call to find parent for a given root node so what we are doing is here we have created, we have taken but on ordered map uh, that is of tree node and tree node type right to store the parent of each node then what we are doing uh, see this is our base condition now if root of uh, left that means the given node has a left child then what we would do is we would pass the value uh, like parent of uh, root of left equals to root that means we have stored that for the left child the parent is this node right so similarly we do it for um, this right child and yeah we recursively call for left and right child okay so so for an example let me put paste the same graph here what we are trying to do here is see we stored uh, well, we created this unordered map unordered map parent and uh, see we are traversing from node 3 to towards the right this is the dfs call we would make but uh, when we before making the dfs call to phi and 1 what we would do there is a left child phi so yeah what we would do is store uh, for a phi store 3 that is for a node phi store uh, uh, parent value to 3 for a node 1 store parent value to 3 and then traverse for phi and 1 Similarly, from five, you will traverse to six. Now, before traversing, what we would do, we would store. Yeah, we have a left child. Then, before traversing left child, what we would do, we would simply store the value for six to five, the value for two to five, right? So, this is what uh, data we would store in the parent, right? So, this complete function would do the same thing for all the nodes. It would store the parent value of a given node. And then, the things are simple. We what we have to do, we have to traverse in the left, right, and top three direction. So, yeah. 
uh, we would traverse in the left direction, node of left, right direction and top direction that is towards the parent. So in order to traverse what we are doing here is see we start traversing from target node also we keep track of k that is the distance travel. Now uh, here we have taken a set so that we don't visit the same node again. So uh, so if the node is already visited then return. Now uh, else we insert the node and we check if k equals to 0. That means that we have uh, we have reached at a distance uh, where k equals to 0. That means we have reached the required distance. So in that case simply push the node value to the answer right we have already uh, taken one answer variable here we would simply push that well uh, current node value to the answer and we don't do anything see these are so here if after this you can simply make a return call okay because there is no need right for the to uh, to check for this if condition we can simply make a return call okay directly yeah and yeah if we haven't reached for k equals to zero then we can do uh, we can we would check for the left trial right trial as well as stop so yeah this way we would traverse in the three direction so yeah here also the time complexity and the space complexity would remain the same but this is just uh, one another approach you can say uh, to solve this question although the observation part for both the approaches is uh, the same but there is a slight difference in the coding part right here we are not maintaining any graph data structure here okay so yeah guys that's all for this video if you guys have still any doubts then do let me know in the comment section make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel thank you